Hello and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me Peter and in today's video um, I've got this photo scan here that you can see I've already retextured this one this is a pepper mill that I scanned that I own um, and it's a little bit dirty underneath and what I thought we would try it's something I haven't tried before but it's a I was thinking about taking it into plasticity and rebuilding the mesh and reprojecting the color data so we can get a slightly cleaner mesh than this and maybe a bit lower poly as well. Um, this is just a very quick remesh that I did. Um, and let's have a look. Um, we've got it textured already, so this is the textured version. However, I do have the high poly version here. Now if we go over here and we stick to attribute mode, you can see I've got all of the color data and everything like that and the details underneath. So I'm going to take this version into plasticity. What we'll do is, is we'll try and remodel it and then reproject that color data. Now I just quickly want to thank everyone for the last year. We're now at 1250 subs. I was at about 50 subs this time last year and I think that's just an insane. Uh, we're growing every single day and I'm now part of the YouTube partner program so I'll be looking forward to some pennies rolling in and I've got all of you to thank for that. So big, big thanks to all of you for being here. Everybody that interacted, bought my add-ons um, and, and other digital products and just helped motivate me to keep going. So. Just want to say big thanks to all of you. So we'll head over into plasticity. And what we've got here is that exact same mesh, except um, I've brought it in as an OBJ. So I've locked it, so I can't select it or anything. And we'll get straight into it from the top. And I'm gonna start with a center circle, okay? And as you can see, it's not quite symmetrical. So we'll figure out on how to deal with that. Um, later on but we'll just bring this all the way to the bottom okay and we'll try and get this one as close to being in the center as possible I'll just go into control 7 underneath and it's not quite symmetrical so I don't know how well this is going to work when we get to the reprojection stage because this is a cheap supermarket pepper mill I think it was four dollars from Coles which if you're not from Australia, Coles is part of the supermarket duopoly. Okay. And in Australia, we've got two major mid-tier supermarkets. One is called Woolworths and one is called Coles. And they're basically a cartel. Um, and they fix prices. So that's why part of the reason it's quite expensive to live here. All my opinions are my own, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a uh, control point curve and we're just going to very carefully try and get the outside shape of this. Now it's not going to be perfect so I might give it a little bit of room on the outside if I can. Let's go back a couple steps. Okay. And then what we're going to do in this little crevice here is we're just going to bring it in a bit up to there and then back out. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. Now this is a little bit boring, so I may speed this up in the uh, final video, but we'll have a look um, and we'll just continue on as we are. And once again, I'm gonna pull that in a little bit. Okay, now there's a reason I wanna do that. And as you can see, we're slowly building up the shape here. Okay. And we don't need to be too perfect because the only purpose of this is to reproject some data but we just need to be good enough that the data will reproject once we get into the uh, once we get into the uh, texturing or the baking software okay so we're just gonna pull this up bring that in a little bit like before okay and the same here actually okay and just being careful to sort of just stay around just on the outside of this okay 
And one thing, if you've got a, using control point curves, you probably already know this. If you hold down control, you can get a little bit more uh, detail. But if you bring it out like this, you should be able to eventually get it to conform quite like that. So the further you bring it out, the longer you can drag the curve. So in this case, we're getting in a bit, but it is a control point curve. So once we go into one, we can just move the ones that are too far out or too far in. Okay, let's just conceal our guy here. Just wanna bring those ones apart a little bit. And what we wanna do here with these is very slightly, we're gonna get this split edge um, curve at point. Okay, and I've got that set to Alt E and we just wanna add a couple of new vertices in here. So I'm gonna go Alt E and you can set these uh, shortcuts up to anything that you like. Okay. And then now we've got those, I'm just gonna go and select them all in uh, vertex mode. And I'm just gonna bring them in ever so slightly. And there's a reason that I wanna do that. We can get rid of the circle down the bottom. Okay, so now we've got the profile. We might just wanna bring something in like that. Maybe, and I've already set up a material on this. Oh, I thought I had actually. So what we'll do is we'll actually select this and we'll just get a material that's a little bit easier to see. Get rid of this metallic, we don't need that. And get rid of some of the roughness. And then we're gonna make it a little bit see-through. Okay, and if we just pull this one out on the X. And we just wanna maybe pull it up, pull this up on the Z as well to about there. I'm not gonna to worry too much about this bottom part. I think that can come in as normal detail. Um, we'll have to find out though. So we've got that roughly, we can join these three together and we can conceal this again. And we'll bring this one more curve and nearly to the middle. Okay, so we've got our object. Now you guessed it, we are going to revolve this. Hold on. <laughs> we are gonna revolve this one. Okay, and just pulling that down from the center. And we'll turn our glossy material off. We'll get rid of our curve. And we also, I think, just let's get rid of these um, edges. Except not that one. And this one on the inside as well. Let's just click X. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Now, remember when I pulled those little edges in? They are now hidden in here. And what we can do, if we just turn this back on. Okay, we can see that there's a little tiny sort of uh, shape there. We can just click B on that. And if we just bring that in like that, very, very gently, Oop. very, very gently, there we go. I'm going to press Alt F to conceal that. Actually, let's maybe go back a step and let's see if we can G0 that one. Okay. And this one, G1, G1 and G1. Okay. So that's our pepper mill and it looks pretty good to me. Um, let's have a look at our main guy. There's a little bit of a uh, bevel here, but I think this is gonna play up. Oh no. Just like that. And I think there was a, and we're just gonna give this all a little bit of a curve. Okay, and we can actually delete that line. I don't think it'll let us delete that one though, because it's uh, helping us define the surface. Now let's try and get this top component here. Okay, so 
I think the easiest thing is, is because we've got this concealed, is let's just bring a plane in from the centre. Okay. And I'm going to bring that up right to a round about where that starts. Okay, and it's just because I want a surface to work off. Okay. Mm. And bring this down to about there. And I'm actually going to Alt F. Oh, go into 2. Alt F and turn that into a sheet. And then, fingers crossed, if we start a circle here, that's roughly that size, we can then drag it into position. Shift Z to move it into the right position. Okay. And then we can get rid of that sheet. And we should have our circle around here somewhere. Let's get rid of that curve as well. Uh, all of our curves actually. Oh no, not the circle. What am I up to? Okay, so we've got our circle here. I just want to lock this one so we're not touching it. And let's see, I want to scale, scale. All right. Now the reason I did it like that and rather than trying to use the center is because I actually don't think that the top of this is actually symmetrical because it, it's like a cheapo product. We'll just bring that inside here. It's a cheapo product. And um, now if we O, bring that to about there and, oh, and bring this up. No, we want to bring it in further. And let's just turn this on so we can see where, what we're doing. And let's just bring that in a little bit like that. And then we can bevel that like that. Okay, so we are getting somewhere. Um, now I think what we want to do here is extrude. Okay, and press B for a new body. And we'll just bring that up as tall as the rest of it is. About there. And we can bring that out to approximately where the edge of that is. And I think that should be about right. Okay, so we want to go 4 and 4 and join. Okay. And give this a little bit of a Oh, hold on, not join, we want a QQ. Okay, and we'll give this a bit of a bevel under there, or a chamfer, I think a chamfer will do. And then we want quite a significant chamfer here. And then we can fill up these corners ever so slightly. And we won't bother with the actual detail of the, um, where is it, um, if we, Go, actually let's just go back to Blender for a second. As you can see here, there is some of this sort of inlet detail, but we'll let the de the normal maps deal with that. And I don't know why this is uh, like that. So let's have a look at what, what have I done in shading mode. Ah, we want the color attribute to go into the base color. And that should show up okay there we go and I think what I was doing here I was trying to use the uh, um, the base color to color attribute to make a metallic math I don't know what I was doing but there you go so let's go back to plasticity okay and see what we've got we'll just hide our empty okay and we've got these two here so I think that is more or less Let's just check the bottom again. Okay, I think it's more like... Because oh, it's not even, is it? But I think more like that. Okay, now let's just 
Have we joined these together? No, we'll join them together now. Or actually, we could have left them as separate objects. No, no, I think this is good for now. Now let's go back to Blender and use the Blender Bridge and Plasticity and see how closely this matches. Okay, so we'll connect and only visible refresh. And you know what? ladies and gents I think we did an all right job okay so let's figure this out okay let's see what we've got in terms of a plasticity mesh we'll go down to Angon Pro we'll just turn on wireframe okay and that's our wireframe for this and I think it more or less matches, although the actual object itself isn't 100% even. But I think we've done an okay job. So let's just uh, Smart UV unwrap and combine that one. Let's see what our map looks like. Let's just pack that quickly. Hmm. Let's just go down to 30 and... Uh, this might pack a little bit better. So now we're in Marmoset Toolbag. I've brought it in using the, the Bake Project and the Quick Loader. And this is our Plasticity Mesh. And we're going to go down and we're going to bake the Normals, the Ambient Occlusion, and we're going to configure it and we're going to bake the Vertex Color as well. And let's just turn off Object Normals for now and Material ID. And we're just going to try and preview this once. Okay, we'll just put that in the right place. Okay. So, let's get our vertex color in. That didn't quite work because obviously it wasn't fully matching. So let's go down to our low in our bake project. Okay, and then let's estimate the offset. And let's try that one more time. And let's bake. Okay, we're nearly there. And as you can see, that's coming in as the normal detail down the bottom. We didn't really need to add any extra geo. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to paint. Okay, we're going to paint this area here, or just maybe increase the max offset. And then let's try and bake it one more time. Boom! Look at that everybody. That didn't take very long at all. Look, we're uh, only a few minutes, well it's been 20 minutes or so. But we used plasticity to actually get quite a nice mesh in there. But honestly, I think that's it for this video. I could play around with this all night and I'd eventually get the result that I needed. So thanks a lot for watching everybody, uh, see you in the next one. Um, if you want to know how to rebuild photo uh, scans on, um, rebuild roughness maps on photo scans, I did a tutorial about that a little while ago in Metallic and whatnot. Um, but this looks fine to me. Thanks a lot, see you in the next one, and I'll be back in about a week or so. Tschüss!